Hello you beautiful people, welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel, I'm the Beastly Gamer and today we're going to have a little discussion about PlayStation 4 Pro and PlayStation VR. Now I don't have the Pro, but I do have PlayStation VR. I enjoy it quite a bit, I don't play it every single day, it's a lot. It's a lot to hook up and unhook, but it's a very enjoyable thing. I really, really am impressed by the level of detail and immersion that's put into a lot of these games. Now. The PlayStation 4 Pro, I've seen it. My brother owns one. You know, Briar Rabbit, one of my good friends, owns one. Got it on release. Uh, and, and these guys are really enjoying it. Personally, I haven't seen anything so far that makes me say, oh, Beastly, you gotta go buy a PlayStation 4 Pro right now. I don't need it right now. I just don't feel like I do. There's been a few things I've seen that have kind of put me in that mind state. Some of the games on PlayStation 4 Pro aren't performing as well as they do on the base vanilla PlayStation 4. Games like The Last of Us, one of my favorite games of all time. Skyrim, on PlayStation 4 Pro, the frame rate is not as good as it is on the regular PS4. Now you're going to get better frame rates, but in some games, you don't even get that. Overwatch for PlayStation 4 Pro still runs in 1080p mode, but it has 4K icons on the HUD. So, for me, the games that I have that I'm enjoying, I'm not going to get any real benefit by playing them on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And on top of buying a PS4 Pro, I'm going to need to buy a 4K TV with, with HDR in order to really have the optimized experience on the Pro. So I'm on the fence about that just when it comes to base games. But one question I've had for a while now is how will the Pro help me with my PlayStation VR? There are some games in PSVR where you play them and you get that jarring sensation, your equilibrium's off and you start to feel a little sick. Certain games like Drive Club VR, where you're actually in the game and you're driving and you look at other cars while they're driving, it's very pixelated. You can tell that it's not hitting 1080p. You can tell that the, the console's having major trouble keeping up. And so, doing my due diligence, I did find a very interesting article on one of the most respected news outlets in the world, The Guardian, concerning PlayStation 4 Pro and PlayStation VR and I wanted to share it with you guys. I'll drop a link in the description. Does PlayStation 4 Pro really improve virtual reality performance? On the face of it, Sony's decision to sacrifice resolution seems surprising, but the trade-off is an improved frame rate which makes the viewing experience as a whole much smoother, says Will Freeman. With the arrival of the current generation of virtual reality, much of the battle for hardware supremacy has focused on one seemingly esoteric factor the trade-off between image resolution and frame rate. It may seem like a curiously technical point on which to define a consumer product war, but with VR, how a game is displayed isn't just a matter of aesthetics. It can severely impact user comfort and even function. In designing their respective headsets, the teams behind Oculus Rift and HTC's Vibe opted to offer high display resolution. Each headset sports a 2160 by 1200 overall output comfortably trumping PlayStation VR's 1920x1080p fidelity. So why did Sony choose to make sacrifices in image quality? One factor, it appears, is that PSVR has forgone peak resolutions as to prioritize running at an optimized 120 frames per second, capably beating the 90 frames per second offered by HTC and Oculus. Technically, some content for Sony's headset is bumped from 60 frames to a full 120 frames via an approach named reprojection, but the point stands. PSVR sacrifices resolution in favor of a more comfortable movement. That potential for fluidity means a less jarring experience as you spin your head when inside the virtual realm, which in turn serves VR's ultimate offering, presence. This is the most striking element of a quality VR experience the sense that you are really occupying a world that you are visiting. But as potent as that sensation can be, with a stutter of the screen image, the illusion can come crashing down. The PS4 Pro hopes to bolster Sony's position on the arcane front line. With a faster CPU and more powerful graphics processing than the standard PS4, it promises to augment the capabilities of the PlayStation VR hardware. We set out to see how noticeable this is. The boost the PS4 Pro provides to PSVR slightly adjusts the frame rate resolution trade-off, potentially bettering both image and movement quality. Any improvement, however, is strictly limited by the existing PSVR hardware, which is locked at the aforementioned 1920x1080p resolution. In other words, whatever technical powerhouse you plug Sony's headset into, 
The screen is the size it is. It is not 4K and does not support HDR. Two front of the box features on which the PS4 Pro is being sold to traditional flat display users. However, the upgraded PlayStation does promise to improve frame rate smoothness and consistency for VR, which should further remove jutter and blur from any virtual reality game optimized for the Pro. That is an important note. Many future PSVR releases will come Pro ready, while numerous existing titles have already been prepared for the machine via an update. The key question then is what real difference does all this make for those games? Without considering motion, a given pro-optimized PSVR game typically looks only decidedly improved by the more powerful PS4. Across the spread of smaller experiences in Sony's own VR worlds, there appears to be a little more graphical finesse via the Pro. While in the more complex Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, or Drive Club VR, there is more discernible improvement in detail and texturing. The tangle of neon slash wireframes within Res Infinite's VR mode, meanwhile, do look as if they are a touch more vibrant and present. And then there's Robinson, Crytek's tale of being stranded alone on a dinosaur riddled island. Pro from day one. Robinson is perhaps the best looking PSVR game yet, regardless of the console version powering it. But bolstered by Pro, detail at a distance is noticeably improved. In tandem with the support for the enhanced SSDO, SSAO lighting effects, exposing that visual quality. Add in higher quality texture filtering and more seamless level of detail generation, and while the difference is neither striking nor game changing, Robinson is definitely a prettier game when played through the Pro. However, all Pro Ready titles tested still carry a resolution somewhat lower than seen on the typical HD flat display, thanks to PSVR's per eye resolution of 960 by 1080 so visually, the upgraded console remains fundamentally comparable to that enjoyed on the vanilla PS4. But there's something else to consider. Start to move around a little more and a few more benefits materialize. Most importantly, there is less motion blurring. A sharp flick of the head from left to the right reveals that even rapid movements are greeted with slightly crispier, steadier images. All of which makes things more convincing and more immersive. The improvement is subtle, but the impact is more significant. It can make all the differences between a comfortable experience and a nausea-inducing nightmare. Even in low movement titles like the block stacking puzzler tumble, that improvement can be felt. And for more energetic experiences like the online shooter rigs, mechanized combat league, or VR world scavenger odyssey, things do feel a touch more fluid. Again, the improvement isn't wild or outstanding, but something feels different. Res Infinite is very comfortable with the intensity setting pushed up to the upper limit via the PS4 Pro, and back in the front seat of Drive Club VR, the experience does feel just a shade more comfortable and less demanding on the senses. But then Drive Club VR was always a comfortable game. Robinson, meanwhile, has a few too many movements that trigger motion sickness on the standard PS4. And alas, over on the Pro, it's the same story, despite all the improvements to the level of detail generation and texture filtering. That alone highlights an often forgotten point when considering the quality and usability of a VR experience. Arguably, the onus is on the content, not the platform. There's more good news, though. Broadly, loading times have been cut a good deal, which also limits how much texture pop-in blights games. Another factor that can significantly impact a sense of presence, and while it is a small detail, the extra USB port on the Pro's rear does make the PSVR's abundant wiring a tidier business, leaving an extra port free at the front for controller charging, an important consideration when juggling the power levels of Move controllers as well as DualShock 4s. The VR Verdict Ultimately, the PlayStation 4 Pro does make a difference to PlayStation VR games. But for now, it's subtle, and the true potential may only emerge with time as more and more titles ship with pro-native features. If you're particularly prone to simulation or motion sickness, getting a pro now may just make a positive difference to your VR experience. For those beguiled by even the most delicate improvements to graphics fidelity, meanwhile, there should be some appeal. And if you are already set to gain from the non-VR perks the pro offers, then the fact that you'll also have access to the best version of one of the most comfortable, accessible high-end VR experiences could make it very worth your while. So for me, this is very telling. Now, to be totally honest, this article here makes me more likely to not worry about buying PS4 Pro. It seems like it's very, very subtle. And if it's very, very subtle, just for VR, I don't know if you know a $400 uh, entry cost is worth it just for slightly better VR. Basically, my, my opinion of the PS4 Pro right now is it is a little underpowered. It is not what I wanted it to be. It's not what I thought it was going to be. They're having a lot of trouble 
getting these games to run optimized on the Pro. It's definitely better than the PS4. It's definitely amazing for the price. But when it comes to PlayStation VR, if it was just VR alone, I would be very, very hesitant about buying the PlayStation 4 Pro. Am I getting the Pro? Absolutely I am. I'm definitely picking it up. It'll be sometime next year. You know, it's Christmas. I got a lot of things going on. Uh, but sometime next year, I'm going to definitely pick one up, probably the first quarter of 2017. And then I'll get back with you guys and let you know exactly what I think about PS4 Pro and VR. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Did this article help you out at all if you're wondering about getting the Pro for PlayStation VR or vice versa? Maybe you have the PlayStation Pro and you're wondering about getting VR. If that's the case, I say VR is definitely worth it. It's awesome. It's very worth having. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up and show support for the channel. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter. And you can support my channel by visiting BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Take a body call. Take a body's high.